This video is brought to you by our amazing supporters over at Patreon. Hey everyone, it's Ben from Board to Bits, and in this video we're actually going to make our level select scene functional where we can choose a button that has our level that we want, click it, and go directly to that level. So the first thing we need to do is have create a space where these buttons can be populated. And for that, I'm going to go to our level select canvas and I'm going to create a new empty object inside of it. And I'm going to rename this to button container. And I'm going to resize it a little bit too. And these, these are just kind of arbitrary numbers that I have found work. Um, you can obviously size yours to whatever you'd like. Um, so I'm going to do a width of 400 and a height of about 200. Actually, a width of 410, sorry. And then we're going to add to this a grid layout component. So if I type in here and I go grid layout group, sorry, uh, grid layout group component. And I'm going to quickly adjust these as well here. I'm going to change the cell size to 60 by 60 and our spacing to 10 and 10. Now what all this does is this is basically saying any UI object that I place within here is going to be resized to this size and it's going to be positioned in a grid format in this space. So we can see that in action if I go to our button container, right click and add a UI button, we see that immediately appears and it appears in that square fashion. It does do a little bit of a weirdness in that it appears kind of centered in the top right corner here, but what happens is if I try to move this, you'll see that it automatically snaps um, into the actual space where it belongs. And then from here, if I start duplicating this button, you'll see that it follows that um, grid format. We're just gonna keep the one button for right now. Um, this button I'm going to rename to be level select button. And I'm gonna quickly adjust the text as well here. I'm just gonna say level X, and I'm gonna drop the font size down to about 12, which gives us a lot of leeway in terms of we can get to some pretty high numbers and not worry about this um, wrapping around on itself. Last thing I wanna do here is I wanna make this button into a prefab because we're obviously gonna be making multiple duplicates of it. So I am going to go to our prefabs folder and I'm gonna drag this level select button into our prefabs folder and it becomes blue, it is now a prefab. We can actually delete this instance from our scene and use this um, prefab for anything else we need to do with it. And there is one more thing I want to do with that, which is I'm gonna to go to the level select menu scripts folder that we have and I am going to create a new C Sharp script called level select button because this is how we're gonna actually have the functionality that when it gets clicked, it knows to tell the game um, what level should be changing to and um, what else it should be doing. So with that, we are actually going to drag this now. We're gonna to go to our prefabs folder again, go to our level select button, and we're going to just add down here, I'm gonna add level select button, as a component. So now every instance of the level select button that we create will have this script on it. Also, while we're here, I know for a fact that I'm gonna want this button click here to reference this, so I'm going to quickly add that in. I'm going to drag, um, add in event here. I'm going to drag the component onto there. We don't have the function yet, so I can't actually choose one yet, but at least that's set up for us, so we know that something's going to be happening here. I'll save that quickly, and now we can jump into a couple of our scripts here. So let's start with the level select button. I'm gonna double click this, open it up here. We see we have um, our standard start and updates here, and we can actually delete both of those. We are not going to need those for right now. However, I do want a couple of variables in here. The first one I want is level select UI, and I'm simply gonna name that the UI. So it, this is just gonna be a reference back to that canvas. And I'm also going to have an integer called level index. Both of these are gonna stay private. We don't need to actually have public access to them. What we are going to have though is a public initialize method that's gonna allow when the um, button gets instantiated in our grid, we can then kind of um, populate it with some information. So I'm going to say here, I'm gonna say um, public void initialize, and we're gonna pass in a level select UI call that UI again, and then an integer 
called level index. Now there's a couple approaches you can take to this sort of um, information um, where you're giving this information. One is that you can actually name these different things so there's no confusion. But the other, th if you do it this way, you can do it this way, which is kind of nice because you know exactly what you're um, putting this information into. You just have to make sure that then you say this dot UI. So we're referring to the instances value of the UI equals UI. And so in this case, it's now the parameter. So we're taking the instances variable and we're assigning the parameters value to it. And then same thing, this dot level index equals the parameter level index. So with that now, when we create, like I say, once we instantiate this button, we can initialize it with this and we'll have the information it needs. The last thing it's going to need, however, is a public method for when it gets pressed. So I'm going to say public void on press. And in here, what we're going to do is we're going to say that the UI was then going to call a method, which we haven't created yet, but I'm going to kind of, I'm going to write it in here knowing that I'm going to create it. And I am going to call this level button press, and it's going to pass in its personal level index as a parameter. Obviously coming up red because we have not created this yet, but we're going to do that right now. So that will resolve that for us. I'm actually going to copy this so I make sure that I have the exact same um, spelling. I'm going to jump back to level select UI and I'm going to create a new public method down here, public void level button pressed, and we're going to pass that in an integer called level index. Now we're going to do two things in here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to set the play session manager because that is what's in charge of saying, hey, what's the current level? And then we're going to change the scene. Changing the scene is easy enough. We've done that a number of times now. I'm simply going to copy this and paste it in here. And when we change the scene this time, we're going to want to go, we'll press the level button, we're setting the play session manager, and then we're going to go to the game level. So that is just going to be going right to our level scene. However, the play session manager, we do need to do a little bit of extra work on. And that's because our play session manager, if we jump over to it, we have this integer that's tracking our current level, but we can't currently do anything with it. It's a private variable, and we cannot, um, we cannot get that information, and we cannot set that information. Right now, all we want to do is actually set that. We want to say, when this level button gets pressed, um, we want to set the play session manager's current level. So I'm going to create a uh, property here. I'm going to say public int, and I'm going to call this current level, so it's the same name but capitalized, which is kind of the, um, the way that people traditionally will say, hey, this is um, a property that already exists as a variable, but it's the property version of it. You can also do it sometimes where you put a, um, put a uh, underscore in front of it. Um, I just, I find that looks a little bit um, messy, so I just tend to put the capital letter there. And then we're going to say inside of these um, brackets here, no parameters, because this is a property, we're just going to say set. And we're going to set our current level equal to whatever value um, is written in the code. And so how this works in the um, code itself is now in our level select UI here, we can say play session manager dot instance dot current level and we'll see when this appears here. I don't know why it's giving us red there. That's a little odd. Oh, it's probably, oh, I know why. It's because I've got, um, it's, it's trying to continue the line down here and it's not making sense to it. So if I add that, this might help, but there we go. You'll see here we have public int current level set. So what we can do is we can simply set that equal to whatever the level index is. So basically we have a button, say it's set to index zero. When we click the button, it passes that zero value to here, which is going to set the current level to zero, and then load the game level scene. So with all that in place, we're actually in a pretty good shape here as far as our actual button pressing goes. Now we just need to make sure that we actually populate our level with these buttons, or our, scene, our menu with these buttons. So I'm going to jump up here, and I'm going to create a void start method. 
And in here, what we're going to simply do is we're going to look at our Play Session Manager's catalog, which has all of the levels that we've stored. And we're going to say, for each level in it, make a button. So we're going to say for int i equals 0, i is less than Play Session Manager dot instance dot catalog dot length because remember we put in a handy little kind of a helper integer there called length that lets us know automatically how many levels are in the catalog so as long as it's less than the catalog we'll keep iterating through i plus plus and then in here what we're going to do is we're going to instantiate something However, we don't have anything to instantiate right now. We need to make sure that we have references to our prefab as well as that container so that we can store it in. So what I need to do before I write that is I need to create two variables. I'm going to create a public um, level select button called button prefab as well as a public transform called button container. Now in here, what we're going to do is now we're going to say um, level select button, and I'm going to call this new button equals instantiate button prefab, and we're going to use the transform button container as its parent. Now in previous versions of Unity, you would have to actually say here as level select button because instantiate would just give you an object and you had to make sure you were casting it to, um, in this case, level select button or whatever class you were creating. However, as of 2017.2 um, or so, it seems, um, Unity automatically will cast that for you. So you no longer have to write that if you're using a newer version of Unity. With that, now I need to also make sure that I initialize that button. So I'm going to say new button dot initialize. And we're going to pass in our level select UI, which is actually the um, class we're working in. So we can just say this, pass in itself, and then pass in whatever iteration we are currently on. And that's really all that this takes right now, all this requires. We can now jump back over to Unity, and we'll see that if we hit play, uh, or we do need to make sure that we populate these things. So let's jump to our level select UI. We want to make sure that we add the button container as the transform there, and then our button prefab, we jump to our prefabs, level select button, and we'll add that in there. And now, if I hit save and we hit play, we should see that this populates. However, we do have a couple of issues here. First off, we can click these and nothing happens, and secondly, we're not changing the labels on these buttons, they're all just saying level X, which isn't providing us with much information. Both of these are quick fixes, however. The first one, our level select button, we want to make sure that where we left this as no function before because we hadn't written it yet, we change that function, go down to level select button, and make sure we set that to the on press. Secondly, to change the labels, what we just need to do is we need to jump back to our level select button um, script here. We're going to add using Unity UI so that we can get access to the text component. And down here, we could add a variable and get the variable and, and um, assign it, pre-assign it and all that, but I think for the purposes of this, it's just as quick for us to say, simply get component in children, because remember, a button doesn't actually um, store the text, it's the child object that has the label. So we're gonna get that text component in our child dot text, the actual written string, and we're going to set that equal to level with a space, make sure you add that space in there, and then level index. And here's actually a second um, change that Unity 2017 seems to have made, which is that um, in the past you would have to have written this as level index dot to string and then choose the formatting for it. Um, now it seems that Unity can automatically just take an integer and convert it to a string that will work with the UI system, which is a nice little bit of a time saver there. But if you are again using an older version of Unity, you will need to type in here to string, and then you may need to use um, specifically the D um, decimal, or actually, um, which one is it? You could do 
you could do F0 as well, which would give you a um, which would give you the number without any decimal places. But we can just simply say level index if we're using the newest version of Unity. So with that in place, now we can jump back over to Unity, hit play, and we see that these populate, they give us their actual values, and if I click on say level two, we are now in level two where we have the diagonal motion and the two diagonal obstacles. I can return to the menu, choose a level. If I go to level one, we see we have the single obstacle level. I can do next level or I can return to the menu, choose level, level zero works kind of the same way as just starting the game, but you have that option. So with this, you should have a fully functioning level selection screen. However, um, there's obviously still more functionality we can add to this. Namely, what I want to do is be able to track what level has, have we reached in the game. Because if you're just starting for the first time, you don't want to be able to go right to the last level of the game. So in the next video, we're actually going to start tracking how far we've progressed, um, storing that information somewhere so that as you come back to the game, you can make progress with each session that you play, and ultimately um, making the level selection options reflect how far you've gotten in the game. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.